Uh, you know, there's an old cowboy saying out in West Texas, speak the truth, but ride a fast horse. Uh, <laughs> and the truth is, of course, that our government has become a wholly owned subsidiary of Wall Street and the corporate elite who are openly supplanting our democracy with their kleptocracy, a government of thieves, of by and far the bankers and bosses, the big shots, bastards, and bullshitters who think that they are entitled to run roughshod over we the people. Now we know who to thank uh, for this sellout and let us call their names and remember their names and repeat it every chance we get. Sam Alito, Anthony Kennedy, John Roberts, Antonin Scalia, and Clarence Thomas, the five black-robed thugs The five black-robed thugs who mugged the American people with an assault gun called Citizens United. Anthony Kennedy, the learned judge who wrote this dreadful opinion, actually rationalized it by declaring, and I've got it right here, declaring, we now conclude that political expenditures, including those made by corporations, do not give rise to corruption or the appearance of corruption. Now, I, I know Supreme Court judges are highly educated, uh, but you read something like that and you think, 100,000 sperm and you were the fastest? <laughs> of course, unlimited corporate cash is going to corrupt our elections. The Supremes, if they were confused at all on the concept, they could have looked back to the candid comments of the convicted uh, savings and loan scoundrel, Charles Keating, back in the 1980s. He was asked at a Senate hearing later whether the $1.5 million that he doled out to key committee members to be able to pull his uh, scandals uh, had bought any political favors. And Keating responded, I certainly hope so. <laughs> they, they don't do this by accident. They don't put this money into members of Congress uh, just because they want good government. They want their government. They want the government that will serve them. Uh, our friend uh, Molly Ivins uh, some years ago told a story, a great story about, a, about this uh, money in politics. She told about a state senator uh, who had gotten elected out in uh, the Abilene area and came to, to Austin for the first time and f first thing of course he met a lobbyist and the lobbyist said I'm going to need your vote tomorrow in, in this committee uh, here's two hundred dollars and so the senator put it in his pocket and thought well this is going to be all right uh, and the next day came the vote and lo and behold the senator voted against the lobbyist so the lobbyist you know said what the hell are you doing my god I gave you $200, and, and, and the senator said, well, the other side offered me 400 <laughs> And so the lobbyist exploded, uh, the, the senator, uh, yeah, the lobbyist exploded all over the senator talking about integrity and, uh, you know, uh, responsibility uh, in government, ethics. Uh, and uh, the senator, you know, pulled himself up uh, with all the uh, respectability that he could and said, well, you knew I was weak when I took the 200 <laughs> 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 Well, of course, as Molly uh, wrote again and again, it's not about uh, the 200 and the 400. It's not about this state senator or that one. It's about the corrupt system, the corrupt system money uh, that allows anybody to put in now unlimited sums of money. Uh, Keating's one and a half million dollars, well, that uh, bought some influence. But the corporate billionaires of today are out to buy the whole shebang. Uh, they jumped on Citizen United like a gator on a poodle. Uh, so they, you know, Sheldon Adelson, the casino baron out of Las Vegas, got casinos coast to coast here, got a casino in China, got a casino now in Spain. Sheldon Adelson has already spent $35 million that he gave to uh, Republican candidates for president, including $10 million so far to Mitt Romney. He's also given $36 million so far 
to Carl Rove's Secret Political Action Committee and to the Koch brothers' uh, operations and to Eric Cantor, the majority leader of the Republican House, uh, through their PACs. He says he'll spend $100 million or more to defeat uh, Obama. Now, $100 million from one person or more. Now, I think if you spend $100 million, shouldn't you get naming rights to the campaign? I mean, I mean, you got, Alliant got the naming rights to this facility right here. I mean, shouldn't for $100 million you get the Sheldon Adelson, Mitt Romney, Flim Flam campaign or something like that? I mean, you ought to have your name up there. And by the way, I don't know if you saw, but uh, Mitt Romney's a million dollar plus donors, uh, they had their own little private tete-a-tete -tete, uh, down in uh, Tampa at their uh, convention there uh, aboard a yacht. And that yacht uh, is a 150-foot uh, yacht, uh, pretty nice uh, boat. It was called the Cracker Bay. And guess what flag the Cracker Bay was flying? The Cayman Islands. <laughs> is that just absolutely perfect? The home of Mitt's money. I mean, there it was. Uh, and, and as guests uh, got off the yacht uh, to get in their SUVs and go to the next event, uh, the, the millionaires uh, some media was there, so they covered up their name tags with their hands, you know? <laughs> uh, not even willing to disclose uh, their name. It was like a perp walk of political mon mobsters. Uh, just astonishing to watch. Uh, one more. Guess who was a Romney delegate to the Republican convention? David Koch. He was a delegate there. Now, Koch has promised to lay out $400 million dollars to defeat Obama and elect their boy, Mitt, whose energy plan is a Coke wet dream, I can assure you of that. There, was, there even was a tribute to David Coke uh, in Tampa. It was called Salute to Entrepreneurs Building America, an entrepreneur who herit, inherited a fortune from his daddy. <laughs> yeah, that's entrepreneurial power right there. Well, guess who put on this salute? David Coke. <laughs> This is why Lily Tomlin has said, no matter how cynical you get, it is almost impossible to keep up. <laughs> now, to see what this conspiracy of thieves will do to America's egalitarian ideals, look at the Romney-Ryan, Ryan-Romney tax plan. The Nieberdu plan. Nieberdu is Robin Hood spelled backwards. <laughs> the intentional inequity of their tax policy prompted the president to say to a crowd uh, in Georgia, the super rich create loopholes to avoid paying their fair share of taxes. This made it possible for millionaires to pay nothing while a bus driver is paying 10% of his salary, and that's crazy. Do you think the millionaire ought to pay more in taxes than the bus driver, he asked the crowd, or less? And the crowd roared back, more. That wasn't Barack Obama. It wasn't Bill Clinton. It was Ronald Reagan in 1985. Well, how far the Republicans have come, huh? In only 30 years, we've gone from Ronald Reagan's trickle-down economics to the Koch brothers' tinkle-down economics. <laughs> They're now peddling the same old snake oil that poisoned our grassroots economy in the Bush-Cheney regime. But Romney says that his experience as a financial vulture at Bain Capital gives him the know-how to fix our economy. Of course, he uses fix in the same word that a veterinarian does. And those of you looking at me blankly, you need to ask your dog about that. <laughs> well, this brings us to us, you and me. Uh, what, what is a progressive Bob LaFollette little d Democrat to do? Well, first, we need to get behind those who actually advance the cause, who represent real change, like Tammy Baldwin here in Wisconsin, like Elizabeth Warren, of course, over in Massachusetts. Uh, we've got 
We have so many strong candidates who are running that you don't hear a whole lot about. Those two you do, but you don't hear a whole lot about them. But you can go to progressivedemocratsofamerica.com or various other organizations out there and learn about these candidates who are really standing up and fighting. And by the way, the other group that advance the cause and who represent real change are those uh, Wisconsin state senators and legislators who stood with us in the great fight in this state. And what a sweet little victory it was yesterday from the court, right? <laughs> As Ed Garvey keeps saying, it's not over until it's over, and it's not over. We just keep incrementally making progress, and you are making progress. The media tried to say that you were defeated in that recall election. You were not. You forced a recall on a sitting governor with tens of millions of dollars from the Koch brothers uh, and et cetera, uh, to force him to have to have a recall election. Then you pushed him to the wall, and then he barely won, and you took over the state Senate, and you created a statewide organization that will keep moving, that will keep progressing. Wisconsin will be back. A second thing that we little d Democrats have to do, we progressives have to do, I believe. I know some will disagree, but while I, because I know that so many of us, including me, have lost that loving feeling for Barack Obama, uh, we progressives, I think, have a special duty, if necessary, to lift him like a sack of concrete and carry him to victory. Uh, not, not, not because of him because he has disappointed us. He's done many good things, but he has disappointed us, and he will disappoint us again, but because of us and because of our steadily developing grassroots movement with a Romney-Ryan administration and a Coke-owned Congress, we'll be hurled back to the deeply negative, defensive crouch, uh, devoting all of our time and energy and resources and creativity to, to fending off the horrors and losing the grassroots momentum we've got going with hundreds of progressive campaigns at a grassroots level uh, all across this country. Uh, Obama is a marker that will stay there. We can use him as a marker to hold what we've got. Uh, rather than having to move into negative battles, we can still continue to fight the progressive battles at a grassroots level, which is where the fight really has to be made anyway, as we learned here uh, in Wisconsin. The third thing that we can do, and this one I think is most essential, we must, uh, we really must, that word gets overused, but I think we must team up across issue lines to repeal the Supreme Court's Citizen United anti-democratic abomination with a constitutional amendment. The, the good news is that this effort is well underway in getting stronger than hog's breath, I can tell you that, as more groups join in uh, and people learn uh, that we can indeed pass a constitutional amendment to kill this zombie of corporate personhood and, and uh, eliminate corporate cash uh, in our elections. This is not something that we have to convince the American people uh, that it's a good idea. 87% of the American people support a constitutional amendment to eliminate corporate money in our politics. 75% of Republicans support that. So what, all we have to do is to collect up that uh, energy, to organize that thought, and to move that forward. Washington is not going to do it. Uh, neither party is, is going to make this happen, because that's where the money uh, has power. But out here in the countryside, People have power. They got the fat cats, but we got the alley cats. <laughs> and there are more of us than there are of them. So I, I, we, we've got this opportunity to do it. Seven states, seven states, uh, the, both houses of the legislature have already passed uh, uh, resolutions calling on the Congress to send a constitutional amendment to the people so the people can vote 
on getting corporate money out. 68 cities have done so, including right here in Madison. In fact, uh, yes. <laughs> April of last year, 84% of you voted uh, for a resolution that says resolve. The city of Madison, Wisconsin calls for reclaiming the democracy from corrupting effects of undue corporate influence by amending the United States Constitution to establish that one, only human beings, not corporations, are entitled to constitutional rights, and two, money is not speech. It's pretty straightforward. More than a hundred national groups have already signed on to this. Here's, here's listings of them. It's, it's astonishing. Uh, People for the American Way, Public Citizen, they've been uh, in the leadership of it. Uh, Progressive Democrats of America, Common Cause, uh, CWA, the Communication Workers of America, SEIU, Color of Change, National Congress of Black Women, Physicians for a National Health Program, Rainforest Network, Move On, U.S. PERG, Coffee Party USA, Center for Science and the Public Interest, Demos, Friends of the Earth, Greenpeace, the Hip Hop uh, caucus, Institute for Policy Studies, 350.org, Bill McKibben's uh, organization, Rebuild the Dream, Van uh, uh, Jones' uh, organization, uh, Working Families Party, the Main Street Alliance, Sierra Club, National Education Association, Food and Water Watch, uh, the 99% Declaration, Unitarian Universalist, Veterans for Peace, right on down the line. There, th this, it's astonishing to get these organizations to team up into one thing. And we, with a few more teaming up, we will make this happen. So I'm saying too that whatever else you are involved in through the issue that you care most about, put some effort into this. Go to unitedforthepeople.org, sign up and get involved in this. That's united for the number four, unitedforthepeople.org. Uh, you know, th this is our chance to really uh, make a difference. Uh, we're we're in the in the throes of a real. Uh, revolution here, a, a revolution of the oligarchs to take power uh, from re the, we the people. So my message to you, and I'm sure you're wondering what it is by now, uh, is this. It's up to us. Up to us. It always has been in this country. The powers that be don't do it for us. They do it to us. We've got to be the power. And it's the ordinary folks who have always developed progress, put a little progress in progressive uh, in our country by doing this kind of grassroots work. It's not up to Obama. It's not up to a Democratic Congress. It's up to us. My last book with Susan DeMarco, we told a story about a guy uh, who was uh, in, a tourist in uh, Thailand. He was in, in Bangkok, actually. Uh, and he came out of the Great Temple. And in the glare of the sunlight, there was a monk standing over here in full regalia. So he indicated to the monk, could I snap your picture? And the monk nodded and posed. Uh, he took the picture, and then the tourist turned to a boy over here who was selling water. And he went over and got a bottle of water and paid for it and uh, waited for his change, which was not forthcoming. And uh, he said to the boy, he thought there was a language problem, so he said to the boy, exaggerated, indication, don't I get change, pointing to his palm. And the boy looked up at him and then looked over at the monk and then looked back and then said in perfect English, change comes from within. <laughs> and indeed it does. It comes from within us, uh, from within our hearts and within uh, the countryside itself. Uh, so we've got to just keep pushing. Uh, that's my real message. Keep pushing, but only more so. Do a little bit more, uh, because these are big times. Uh, they're trying to steal our America from us. They're trying to steal those ideals of economic fairness, social justice, equal opportunity for all people. That's what they're taking from us. That's what's at stake. That's why you are so important. I'll leave you with this. Intensify your effort. In the words of uh, Louis Grizzard, the late great Southern humorist, he pointed out uh, something that uh, we in the South have always known to be true, and that's that there's a great big difference between being naked and being naked. <laughs> being naked uh, means you have no clothes on. But being naked, that means you have no clothes on and you are up to something. <laughs>
So let's all get naked together. Thank you very much. Glad to be with you. Thanks to Bob Fest. Keep moving. <laughs>